Now, let's start thinking about the other side of the market. I'm going to do a real simple model of the other side of the market. I'm going to assume that there are producers on the other side of the market. And there are a large number of producers. And for right now, I'm just going to assume that the unit cost of production equals C of Q. That is, the, unit, the cost of producing a unit of output is C of Q. And I'm going to actually make my producers just like my consumers, is that the producers are only going to produce one unit too. Right? That's less essential, but I'm just going to assume that for now. Each producer is going to choose, they're going to produce one unit, and they can choose what quality they're going to produce. All right. And for now, I'm just going to assume there's a ton of potential producers all with the same cost, C of Q. OK? So let's let N equals the number of consumers. M or, yeah, M equals the number of producers. And I'm going to assume M is bigger than N, OK? Just to make my life easy. I'm going to assume that there are more producers than there are consumers. And why? What does that imply? What am I going to know once I know there are more producers than consumers, and each producer gets to choose whether he wants, you know, how much he, whether he wants to produce. He can choose zero if he wants. And he has cost C of Q of producing quality level Q. I have more producers than consumers. Each consumer is going to buy at most one unit. Each producer can produce at most one unit. What's going to happen? What happens once I know M is bigger than N? Can, what? Well, no producer. I mean, it's more than that. There's excess supply of producers, right? Some producers aren't going to produce in equilibrium, right? Because if they did, they would, some of them wouldn't be selling. And if they weren't selling, they'd be losing money. So some producers are not going to produce, which means those producers are going to earn zero profit, which means the producers who do produce also have to earn zero profit. So competition among the producers are going to apply that profits equal to zero. That is, producers don't make any money, which implies P of Q got to be equal to C of Q, right? That is, the price you can charge for quality level Q has to be equal to C of Q. You can't charge any more than that, otherwise people would make money. You can't charge less than that because then you would lose money. So the only prices that could exist in this marketplace would be equal to the cost of production. So if I assume, now I can redraw my picture, same picture actually. I got Q, I got P, I got P of Q equals C of Q, which is pi equals zero. It's my zero profit curve. And then where's my consumers going to go? Well, my consumer is going to choose the quality level that makes him the best off. Q star and P star. Okay. So that would be my choice. That's where the consumers would go. All right. So what would happen in a world where all the consumers were identical? What would happen? What would I see? What would the store look like in a world that looked like this where all the consumers were the same? Yeah. Yeah, we actually wouldn't see this P of Q function in equilibrium. We would only see a single point 
you know, you'd go into Best Buy and it would just be one TV, right? It would just be like the old communist days. It'd be like the one TV. This is like the, this is the people's TV, right? You'd go in there <laughs> and that's the TV you get, you know. So, you know, you would, it would be, that would be the TV that you get, right? So that, that, would be the, that would be the TV that would be there, all right? So if everybody was the same, it would be, it would look, it would look like that, a single point. Now, question? No, okay. What if people were different? What if people had different income levels? What if people had, what if, what if there were two kinds of people? That is, low income and high income. Yeah. Okay, so what do the indifference curves look like for a richer person? Well, um, like up here, they're going to be steeper. That's the key. Through any point, they're going to be steeper, right? That's what's important. That is, their indifference curve is going to get steeper at a given point, right? They're going to cross through the other guy's indifference curve from below. They have a higher preference for quality, which you will come out if they're a normal good. You should verify that. If they're a normal good, those indifference curves will be steeper, and they'll be tangent, therefore, over to the right, right? That is, they'll be tangent to this curve to the right, and if there were a whole bunch of different kinds of consumers, you, like you said, you'd trace out this whole cost curve. You'd just trace out that cost curve because different consumers would come into the store and buy different TVs. And these producers would sort themselves out, supplying different quality TVs, all making the same profit, zero. Some of them making high quality TVs, some of them making low quality TVs. So heterogeneity on the consumer side would push people to choose different points along this single producer's cost curve. This would be some a very simple notion. Now, the price differentials I see in equilibrium, would at each point represent that consumer's marginal willingness to pay for quality, but would trace out the producer's overall marginal cost of quality, right? The slope of this curve is the marginal cost of quality. So it would be, at each point, marginal cost equals marginal benefit for that person. But along the entire curve, in this case, we'd be capturing the marginal cost of quality 